All right, guys, let's get some MLB plays and props for Sunday, April 28th, Slated Games. Trey, leaderboard, start us off. Yeah, guys, I had another 2-0 and day on the MLB game picks. Thank goodness. I gave out the Cincinnati Reds a score over their 4.5 team total and plus a half on the first five-inning run line versus the Rangers. The Reds, they kind of controlled this game and dominated uh, Michael Lorenzen. He got lit up like I expected. And, and Hunter Green, maybe Cy Young candidate. Who knows? Yeah, uh, I had an 0-1 day. The strategy didn't work out. I took the Royals and the Tigers under half a run in the first inning. Garcia, single. Bobby Witt, single. Garcia to third. Vinny, sacrifice fly. Salvador Perez, single. First to third. One out. Next batter, I don't know who it was, single. Thank you, Casey Myers, for the 0-1 day. I am in a struggle bus, but I'm not going to let it stop me for today's play. Trey, let's go to the props. Have you start us off. Yeah, guys, and I am 1-1 one one here to finish off my day. That's going to give out Ellie De La Cruz. Over one and a half hits, plus runs, plus RBIs against the Rangers. Ellie, he went over five in this game. Did not see that coming at all. Could never really get the ball in play where there was no defenders. Frustrating. Also, give out Sonny Gray over 15 and a half outs versus the Mets. Gray, he had a rough uh, sixth inning, but thank goodness he got out of there alive. He pitched six innings here for us to hit the over. Yeah, I am 1 0 currently. I've got Tyler Glass now. He did go over seven and a half strikeouts, struck out nine against the Blue Jays. My player, uh, my batting prop is Jose Ramirez over 1.5 bases. Started the game with a single, and they are currently in the bottom half of the first. So we still got three at-bats, maybe four at-bats to get one more single. And we can go 2-0 on the day on the props. Trey, let's go to the place for tomorrow. Happy you start us off. Yeah, guys, I'm going to be breaking down Bears' favorite team and Bears' favorite pitcher here. This Washington Nationals going up against Miami Marlins game. And this is going to be an entertaining game to watch. That is if you enjoy runs being scored. Give me the over 8.5 total runs in this game. I love that this total number is so low. Because we have some garbage starting pitchers on the mound here. The Nationals, they're throwing out Patrick Corbin, who has been so bad this season. In tune to an 0-3 record with a 6.51 ERA paired to 1.81 whip. Corbin, he's just been allowing a ton of base runners in every start this season. And the Marlins, they're throwing out Ryan Weathers in this game, who's been pretty up and down with a 2-2 record and a 3.16 ERA paired to 1.4 whip. Weathers, he was drafted in the first round as a top pick. But he really hasn't been anything special for the Marlins this season. And if we had two better offenses here, in my opinion, this line would be set up in the double digits. But these two teams, they only combined to average 6.78 runs per game, which is obviously no bueno. But I expect both teams to have better games at the plate here with these two pitchers. And also because of the bullpen, we're going to get at least four to five runs uh, with these two starting pitchers. And they're going to hand it off to a bullpen that's going to allow three to four as well to get us to the over because these two bullpens, they allow an average massive 8.43 ERA. When we're going to see some runs scored in this game, guys, there's no doubt about it. Give me the over eight and a half total runs in the Nationals versus Marlins game. Yeah, I like to play, Trey. Uh, pick a side, though. Um, I wanted to take the Marlins on the money line, but it was too juiced. Okay, t- tell me who's winning the game. Uh, Marlins on the money line. No, wrong. Oh, Try the Nationals are going to... Good. The Nationals good, are going to sweep it, and it's going to be you. a barn burner in extra innings. Yeah, how about uh, – I think it was 11-1 today. How about that? How about that? Come on, Nationals. Hey, the Nationals good. need some good days every so often. Yeah, I love it. I love it. They're going to sweep the Marlins. All right, for my play today, I'm going to be looking at the Twins going up against the Angels. The Twins' bats have been bad all season long. The Angels have been hit or miss for the majority of the games, and neither team is great at stringing together quality games. Both teams struggle to hit the ball for long periods of time. I'm not going to change the strategy. Give me the under first inning runs as the play of 0.5. The current pitching matchup is Pablo Lopez going up against Reed Devers. That's probably the best we can ask for. Reed has been very good this season, especially in the first four starts. He struggled against the Baltimore Orioles in his last game, giving up his first home run of the season. That led to four runs after seven innings pitch. But he's coming into this game still with a 2.12 ERA, a very good start to the year. We just need three outs out of him. And I think it's pretty easy going up against the Twins, who have one of the worst offensive teams in the MLB. For Pablo Lopez, he hasn't started off as well as he probably would like to have. But his problem all season long has been giving up the home run ball. He's only allowed 22 hits on the season. He's given up 14 runs. And that's because he's given up at least one home run in every start but one this season. Going up against the Angels is going to be tough getting past Mike Trout. But after that, there's not a whole lot of talent at that top spot unless Taylor Ward's hitting the three spot. Lopez is a strikeout guy as well, so hopefully he can just strike out the side against the Angels. Give me six outs in this game, under .5 runs in the first five as the play. Trey, let's go to the props. Happy starts off. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Ellie De La Cruz again here to go over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the Rangers. I love this over for Ellie. Even though he did terrible for us yesterday, I believe he got all – his bad bats out of the way. 
and we should be good in the clear today. That's because of his matchup versus Dane Dunning. Dunning, he has simply not been great at all this year. He's ranked in the bottom 5% in the MLB in the following categories. Exit velocity, hard hit percentage, expected slugging, expected batting average, and expected ERA. So needless to say, Dunning, he has not pitched great at all this year for the Rangers. And Ellie, he should be able to smack him all around the diamond. Even though he did not hit a righty very good yesterday, he should in this game. Because so far this season, Ellie, he has a 340 batting average against righties with a 774 slugging percentage. I expect Ellie to smack a dinger, but if he doesn't, he's going to get on base, steal a few, and score a run. Give me Ellie De La Cruz to go over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the Rangers. Yeah, Trey, I like the play from one De La Cruz to the next. Give me Brian De La Cruz to go over 1.5 bases going up against the Nationals, by the way, not related. Uh, I'm not sure what to make about Patrick Corbin's last start because I've never seen him pitch like that before. He went five-plus innings of scoreless baseball against the Dodgers, only giving up three hits. He brought his ERA down 1.50 points. He was very good in the last start, but I don't think he's going to be able to duplicate that because he's given up at least seven hits in his four other starts and at least four runs in his other four starts. I think what we saw against the Dodgers in the last game was a fluke because this is still one of the worst pitchers in the MLB at giving up hits. I like Brian De La Cruz in this game because he is a right-handed hitter and he does hit better against lefties. He's also probably the best overall hitter on this team so far for the Marlins this season as uh, everybody on that team continues to struggle to put up some runs and put up some hits. He's already collected 28 hits on the season, has a 255 batting average, and that's been pretty consistent throughout his entire career. He's a quality hitter going up against one of the worst pitchers in baseball. Give me his over bases as the play against Patrick Corbin. Trey, let's go with the pitching props. Have you start us off. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Tarek Skubal here, and I'm going to go over 17 and a half outs going up against the Royals. Even though the Tigers screwed Bear over yesterday, I'm hoping Skubal pitches good for me today. That's because he's had a Cy Young caliber season again here. Skubal, he's ranked in the top 3% of starting pitchers in a ton of pitching categories. His expected ERA is only 2.12, which is elite. He's been wheeling and dealing on the mound this year with an elite level 0.74 whip, and that's through five starts. Scoobal, he's been allowed to pitch very deep again in games this year because he's been keeping the base pass clean, and in each game he's averaged six innings per game, which is right at this number. I believe we're going to see Scoobal pitch six-plus innings again in here as well. That's because of his matchup versus Kansas City. So far this season, the Royals, they've been a great scoring team, but they've not been really able to travel on the road in tune to an only 3.9 runs per game average whenever they're forced to play on the road, which is the eighth lowest in the MLB. I think we're going to see Scooble pitch a gym of a game here. Give me Tarek Scooble to go over 17 and a half outs versus the Royals. Yeah, Trey, I like the play there for you. For my pitching prop, I really don't want to do it to him, but I'm going to take Austin Gomber to go over his total runs allowed going up against the Astros. I'm a big fan of Austin. I think he's getting a bad rap because he has to play for the Colorado Rockies, and he's been really bad at home in his career. In this game, though, he's not going to be at home. He's going to be in Mexico City. And the problem with that is we have already seen a couple teams play in Mexico City last season. It led to some of the highest scored games of the season. You can't even parlay home runs in this game because the elevation is so high. 2,000 feet higher than Denver. If you get a ball up in the air, it's going out of the ballpark because the dimension is only 332 to both corners and 400 to dead center. I know that the Astros aren't the best team right now. They have the same record as the Colorado Rockies. But both these teams have power in the lineup, especially the Astros. The elevation is going to be really tough in this game. And the over-under is like 16 and a half right now. So I'm guessing Austin's over-under is going to come out at like 3.5. Might even be a ridiculous 4.5. I'm still going to play it, whatever it comes out at, because the conditions are nearly impossible for pitchers to shut down the other team. I'm taking Austin Gomer here on the road to Mexico City. Over is allowed runs uh, as the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went with the over eight and a half total runs in the Nationals versus Marlins game. With these two starting pitchers we have, I feel like we're going to see runs galore. And I'm also going with Ellie De La Cruz over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the Rangers. He didn't do too good for us yesterday, but today is a new day. I'm also going with Tarek Skubal over 17 and a half pitching outs versus the Royals. I feel like we're going to see Skubal pitch pretty deep into this game. Yeah, I'm going to take the Twins and the Angels. No runs first inning. I like the pitching matchup. I feel like we just have to get past Mike Trout and we'll be just fine. They give me Brian De La Cruz over 1.5 bases going up against Patrick Corbin specifically. He's going to dominate him. And then I didn't put a number out for Austin Gober because I'm not sure what it's going to come out at. I'd assume 3.5. We might even get 4.5ers over earned runs, but they're playing in Mexico City. Elevation's high. There's going to be a lot of runs scored in that game. So give me his over total runs as the play there. Guys. That's going to do it for the MLB Picks and Props for Sunday, April 28th, Slate of Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys in the next video, and thanks for watching.
people. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, BearsProfitPlays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself two bucks a month, a little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 